During the Mesozoic era, dinosaurs weren't the only reptiles to evolve a stunning variety of shapes, sizes and adaptations. In fact, the Mesozoic wasn't just the age of dinosaurs, but also the age of crocodilomorphs. These reptiles appeared in the late Triassic, spreading all around the globe and evolving a great variety of forms and lifestyles, a small portion of which still survives today. It was in the southern hemisphere though that these animals reached their greatest diversity, as a result of the proliferation of many terrestrial crocodilomorphs that looked like they came out of some sort of fairy tale. Among these species, one of the strangest was without a doubt the Notosuchen Yacarerani boliviensis, also known as the rabbit croc, who is the protagonist of this episode of Prehistoric Profile. The remains of Yacarerani boliviensis were discovered in 2002 in the Amboró National Park near Santa Cruz de la Sierra, Bolivia. The discovery was made by paleontologist Fernando Novas alongside his wife Roxana Lococo and his Uruguayan colleague Álvaro Moñez while they were exploring the Cretaceous outcrops of the park. From a geologic standpoint, the remains were found in fine to medium grained red sandstone levels of the Los Cajones formation. This type of sediment is probably formed in continental environments, near seasonal waterways, in arid climates responsible for the oxidation of the sand. The fossils found by the researchers were truly extraordinary. In Bolivia, vertebrate remains are extremely rare and often fragmentary. They mainly consist of teeth, single bones or even just footprints. Yakarirani, on the other hand, is known from eight individuals, whose remains have been found in close association with one another. Even some unhatched fossilized eggs have been found. The fossils were extracted from the outcrops inside large blocks of rock that had been worked on and prepared during the following years, until the bones were completely separated from the matrix. These fossils were studied for the first time by Novas and colleagues who described the cranium and the eggs in 2009. Later, in 2015, the Ardi and colleagues described the postcranial remains, and that is, all the bones of the body. Thanks to the abundance of specimens, it was possible to fully reconstruct the anatomy of this peculiar species. Yacarirani boliviensis was an Otosuchin, a distant relative of today's crocodiles. It was a relatively small species, with an estimated length of approximately 1 to 1.5 meters. Its skull was short and flattened and had large orbits and forward-facing nostrils. This animal possessed a type of dentition known as heterodont dentition, meaning that it had teeth of different shapes and sizes in different parts of the jaws. The front teeth were incisor-like and protruded from the mouth, while the teeth situated posteriorly were molar-like and had multiple cusps. Researchers think that this bizarre crocodile relative used its teeth to dig into the soil and to extract the roots in which it fed on. Thanks to the wear of the molar-like teeth, scientists can tell that this animal was able to chew its food, moving the jaws back and forth, a type of jaw movement known as propalinal motion. Yakarirani's limbs were straight and relatively long, and had similar proportion to those of squirrels. And, just like in mammals, the acetabulum was open, so that the femur could fit inside the hips. Both the front and back legs had aligned metacarpals and metatarsals that were close together, thus allowing Yakarirani to keep its fingers pointing forward, unlike crocodiles whose fingers always point outwards. The front limbs had long curved ongle phalanges, which were probably used for digging. Aeostoderms have been found in association with Yakarirani. Given the large number of individuals we have, this could mean that this animal didn't possess any form of derm and bone, unlike today's crocodiles. The lack of osteoderms has also been observed in other crocodilomorphs, such as Jungarasuchus and Pesava campsa. The role of dermal bones in non-crocodilian crocodilomorph paleobiology has never been studied, so many doubts remain on the reason behind the lack of osteoderms in the species. In 2018, Clarak and colleagues conducted an analysis on modern crocodile osteoderms. Modern crocodile dermal bones are usually thick, keeled, polygonal shaped and possess a great number of holes and channels for the passage of blood vessels. This particular morphology is very useful for self-defense and for absorbing heat from the sun. In fact, crocodiles are typically ectothermic or cold-blooded animals, so they aren't able to produce their own body heat. Terrestrial crocodilomorphs, on the other hand, usually had thinner and less vascularized thermal bones, so thermal regulation is to be excluded. It could only have been used for defense. This also supports the hypothesis that terrestrial crocodilomorphs were able to produce their own body heat. 
lack of dermal armor in Yakarani could indicate a great need for agility and lightness. So, Yakarani was probably a light and agile terrestrial animal, adapted for digging and able to regulate its own body heat. This mix of features and the condition in which it's fossilized have allowed researchers to hypothesize that this animal lived in underground burrows, like today's rabbits. Furthermore, the presence of eggs and the large number of individuals found assembled together suggested this species could have been highly social. A study suggesting such a lifestyle was made by Barrios and colleagues in 2016. A neurological analysis has demonstrated that this animal possessed a very sensitive sense of smell and acute vision. A peculiar feature of Yakarirani's anatomy was the fact that its nostrils weren't separated by bone. Instead, they were open and fused. This morphology suggests the presence of soft tissues that probably made its nose look more like that of a mammal's. Due to its anatomy and lifestyle being similar to that of small fossorial mammals, Yakarirani has been nicknamed the rabbit croc. Another important element of the paleobiology of the species is in the eggs that have been found in association with the adults. The eggs have been found in groups of four. Modern crocodiles lay between 10 and 50 eggs. Animals that lay a large number of eggs usually adopt a survival strategy known as R, in which the parents lay a large number of eggs but don't take care of their young. Crocodiles are a strong exception to this rule. The mother takes care of every single youngster, she actively protects them until they are big enough to take care of themselves. Young crocodiles also exhibit some strange behavior compared to other reptiles. Usually when a reptile is born, it is instinctively shy and wary, even towards its own siblings. Young crocodiles instead are highly social, as the siblings tend to stick together and actively seek their mother's company, using vocalization in order to gain it. Yakarirani instead laid just four eggs, fitting perfectly into the survival strategy known as K, so it could have exhibited parental care. The eggs found in association with so many individuals are further proof of this behavior. A low number of eggs has also been attributed to notosuchians such as Marilla Sucus, Bauru Sucus, and Pizarra Campsa. Combining all this information, it can be hypothesized that parental care is an ancestral trait of crocodiliforms. In this video, we have seen how a nearly casual walk in the park has opened up a portal to the past that showed us a world barely impossible to imagine. Yakarirani was a really strange animal. It was totally different to what we think today as a crocodile, a plant-eating, warm-blooded fossora creature that looked more like a mammal than a croc. Nonetheless, this bizarre rabbit-like crocodile relative gives us a better picture of the past biodiversity and allows us to understand the origin of some behaviors in crocodiliforms, the same group to which the majestic reptiles that prowl today's rivers and lakes belong to. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you'd like to support us and our work, please subscribe to our channel. A big thank you to the team members that made this video possible. Fabio Mongiovi, Luca De Florian, Mattia Yuri Messina, Antonio Mialia, and Ivan Frida. As always, today's video has been approved by good old Lambiosaurus Lambe.